Yeah. Me tickle on, me tickle on, me tickle on, me tickle on. 4.30. 7, 7, 7, 30. 2, 2, 15. Hey, yo. Don't need a new style. Being dope is always in fashion. Beast to the West Coast, montage, fashion. Everything's in house, don't need a mansion. Doper than the last one. 430. And like me, Al Mix. I spit that fire. Yeah. And one. Everybody swing you, holla at me if you land one. Don't need perfection, just passion. And don't need to be signed. I ain't got a cast on. A lot of opportunity. Easy bread I passed on, it just felt troubling. Now class is in session and we got them testers bubbling like Scantron. Fresh out the kitchen, signed with a stamp on. I'm on some greatness, y'all on some lateness with no foundation. So it could never last long, I display patience. I done played Jason, it's Saturday the 14th. You got a mask on, look at that, come on. Pushing me to the brink, a stagger in my footsteps and I don't even drink. It's so much on my mind, dog, and I can't even think. It feels like everything. Pushing me to the break. A stagger in my foot. Yo, yo, yo. Hello, hello, world. We are back. Back live in the flesh, in effect. In the flesh. Locker room live. October. What's today? October 8th. You don't know the date, man? Yeah, well, you know, it's real out here. (laughs) It's real. It's real out here. Very real. Hello, world. You can check us out, as always, lockerroomlivetv.com. I am John Reed on Twitter. At Smitty Clutch on Twitter. And, um, yeah, just, you know, holler at us, send us some tweets, you know, check out our Twitter, you know, just correspond with us and, you know, get into the locker room throughout the week um, because we're coming to you on Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, we got a fun show for you guys today. There's a lot of cool stuff happening this this weekend. Uh, today, we got a lot of football, a lot of baseball playoffs. Baseball is getting good. Man, sports is get, sports is in full effect right now. Like, yeah, I don't know what to do with for. myself. Right, even a little basketball action. Right, preseason. I I definitely was watching preseason. Yeah, I'm that guy. So you want to chime in? You want to join the conversation? Three 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 two three nine six five sixteen hundred. Once again, three two three nine six five sixteen hundred. And we are here every single weekend. Not weekend. Week. week. Tuesdays. Tuesdays, nine p.m. on RMC on Air dot com. Yes, yes. So you don't miss us anymore. Yes, yes, uh, y'all. And let's get it started, as we always do. We're going to start with some football. Of course, as we always do. <laughs> and uh, Right. We'll switch it up one of these days. We're going to get to baseball for sure this time. Yeah. Um, man, what a game. Which one? Cowboys, Broncos. Uh, yeah. This I, was, it was I mean, interesting. It was very interesting. Um, this is one of the, it was like a video game. It definitely was like a video game. I, I don't know if I was. I would say it was a great all-around all around game. Right, right. So let's, let's get right into the highlights because there's a lot. You know, Jerry Jones is happy. Jerry Jones is happy. Hopefully, he doesn't have a heart attack up there. He looks like he's ninety, <laughs> even with the plastic surgery. How do you have plastic surgery and make you look older? Oh, man. <laughs> but wow. anyway, look at him. He's like he's about to just croak. Right. Anyway, so here we have uh, Julius Thomas is doing some dance after another touchdown. I think that was like a fast Dougie. It was a, a sped up Dougie. Yeah, I fast think that's forward. What that was. Yeah, and as you see, this is a common theme throughout the whole game: just touchdowns. Um, so Manning, he hasn't slowed down at all. Um, he's still scoring, and but the surprise of this game was that Romo actually went, you know, touchdown for touchdown. He with him. almost looked like a great quarterback. Oh man! <laughs> you know, Once again, but it's Romo being Romo. Like I said, almost. Well, this, this is my problem with that. Like, yes, it was Romo being Romo, mm-hmm. and it always is Romo being Romo. Yeah. Right? As you see right here, this is this is what Romo does. This is Romo being Romo on the money. Yeah, being a star, looking like a star quarterback. That's part of what Romo does. Right. We're going to get to the other part very soon. <laughs> yeah. And every real Dallas Cow- Cowboy fan is, which is what I am. We had that feeling in our in our guts. Too. That's back a great shoulder, ball. Back, back shoulder right. to that animal right there, Des Bryant, who I think right now, I'm not saying he is better, but he is playing like the best receiver in football. Yeah. I mean, yeah, every time they throw the ball up to him, he makes plays. And as you see right here, Mo Claiborne finally makes a play because he has been burnt toast all season. That was a bad ball, though. They it was a bad ball. Oh, wow. shoulder. So we can't even give him some love for that. I'm just saying. So it was an accident. No, you accident. Know, you're a quarterback, right? You were a quarterback? That was definitely underthrown ball. Okay, great. <laughs> I was just trying to give Mo some love out there. Maybe his confidence will pick up. Hey, I mean, he made the play. He did. Um, Romo right there making play. He made plays the whole game with his legs. I mean, it looked like Houdini out there. He's yeah. running around, circling, and coming back, throwing it, running. And, like, in. This is hard to say right now. 
You need, you need I'm moment. getting emotional. I'm, I'm in a moment right now. Like as Des Bryant scores a touchdown. Like I was saying, all almost, Cow- almost scores a touchdown. Excuse me. Oh yeah, he got tired yeah. right there. <laughs> <laughs> Poor- Good play though, nonetheless. I'm not <laughs> hating. Yeah, it was. He just got tired. Yeah. Um, Romo, like all Cowboy fans, we knew that last drive. You get that feeling in your stomach, and you're like, "Oh, <laughs> it's Romo time." Like not this Romo time, the other Romo if time. We're not up 17. It's a problem. It's a problem. <laughs> if we don't give ourselves a little cushion for him to throw like two picks, right? And and this is the problem I have with that. Like, if we know it, why doesn't the coaching staff know it? Right. You know, like the, the this drive right here. This is that's oh, the Romo. That's boy. the Romo we have come to know. Boy. Boy. And hate if you're a Cowboys fan, or love if you're a Cowboy hater. I wouldn't call it triple coverage, but there are definitely three guys around the <laughs> football. That's like a new coverage. I mean, it was. A, I think it was a zone. Like, Maybe Romo thought he could throw it through him. Right. Yeah. yeah Romo and that's just. A, and if you look right there, you see Demarco Murray. Great play. And that's the that's the check down right there, right? Oh, right. right. That's the now, check down. Let's bypass check now, down. We now, don't need that. now, see, this is the point I'm making here. If you're the coach, and this is the last drive, you're going to see Manning do his thing, and they're going to score. I'm wow. like, what well, we did. <laughs> Why not run the ball? We're up. I mean, it's tied. Tied score. And there's two minutes left. All timeouts. Three timeouts. Oh, Why wow. not run the ball at least on the first play? Right. Maybe, worst case, you get, what, second and seven? Yeah. And then guess what? Romo, maybe he does take that check down. Because we all know Romo gets in trouble when he tries to do too much. Definitely. And I think that's what he did on that play. He tried to do too much instead of just taking a check down, right, the right. throw to DeMarco, and playing for third down. I think he thought it was the first quarter. You know, <laughs> He's like, hey, let's soften up the defense a little bit. You know, stretch, stretch him out. <laughs> we're, we're interceptions. Go down the field a little bit. We don't need a check down. So maybe if I trick him and throw it right at him, he'll, he'll <laughs> <Yeah>. miss it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a magical trick, you know. We start calling the Cowboys team Pepto. All right, I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to sit here and take any more of this. Upset like you, you are just not going to just go joke it for joke. It makes you nauseous to watch. You're like, oh, they got so far, but yet it made you nauseous. Why? Why? Actually, I don't it didn't believe make me you. Nauseous. All right, I don't. Believe, I was going to say I didn't believe I that at all. It made you nauseous. It made you laugh. <laughs> it made me laugh. I didn't get nauseous. No, that's when because I know. That, that's coming. when I know there's a problem. That's when you knew it was coming. and You knew it was going to be bad. Yeah, it's like it's like I had the the, the vaccine for Romo. Wow, is, this. That's when it's time to get traded. But anyway. <laughs> we can't trade him. We just paid him. Oh boy. Anyway, enough of that nonsense. Uh, well, All right. <laughs> so let's break this one down. Okay. Well, wait. First, can we? There's one other topic I want to talk about in this game. Okay. Moreno. He was the key no for shine. the Broncos. No shine. Ran well. He ran well. Caught well. He made a big catch in that game. Yeah. Um. To you know, take it to first down, yeah. a third down catch. But something I found that was hilarious was at the time, Skip Bayless, who is a, a controversial figure in, Skip in sports. Baseless, as Stephen A. would call him. That's very funny. <laughs> it's a very accurate nickname for him, too. Um, but anyway, he made he sent out a tweet which basically said that, you know, Manning was being Manning. Yeah. Um, but basically, um, Moreno was having a great game and he was killing the Cowboys. Yeah. But our friend... LaShawn Shady McCoy. Now I'm starting to understand why they call him Shady. Yeah. <laughs> very, very Took shady. it upon himself to respond to this tweet. And let's just can we get a visual of that and and just show exactly Oh, we had it, but then it disappeared. Well you, you wanna you wanna just, you know, talk about it what he said? Well actually I didn't understand the tweet. Um, maybe I can pull it up real quick. Well, this basically is, the, it said, the tweet no bas- Sean sucks. Yeah, I don't know what else there, there is to understand. All right, I'm going to pull it <laughs> up while, right we, while the- we talk about it. I'm going to pull it up and so we can all <laughs> talk about That's it. That's straight to the point right there, buddy. Like, no Sean sucks. Yeah, but that doesn't make any sense. I mean, this guy is an NFL running back. There we go. Okay. Yeah, so we got, so as we see, the real Skip Bayless, if you know Twitter, you know, I just figured this out myself. Um, so the first tweet was Peyton is doing what Peyton always does. Right. But no Sean is killing the Cowboys. Right. This sounds fairly accurate. Fairly accurate, right? Right. Right. But LaShawn Shady McCoy takes it upon himself to say, No Sean sucks. Wow. <laughs> Maybe they were boys and he was just like, Oh, let me just take a little jab at my boy, no Sean. Right? That doesn't sound like there's no L O L at the end no. or JK or just kidding maybe or you know all the Twitter etiquette up, you know? Yeah. Maybe. Or maybe they were once boys and like, you know, No Sean stole a beer out of his refrigerator or something. It definitely sounded like very like bitter high school rivalry. That yeah. You know? Maybe they, did they play against each other? I or, don't know. Or did No Sean like date his ex, you know, That's his what girlfriend? That like, right. You know, or did he beat him out for prom queen? Captain Or a. King, sorry. Oh, prom, wow. prom King. Wow. I did, that was not intended. Wow. Prom King. Wow. But yeah, but this is this is uh, McCoy has a history of this 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 shenanigans. That's why they call him Shady, right? That's why they, they, I'm starting to believe that's <laughs> the origin of the nickname, <laughs> um, because 
<laughs> years back, I don't know if you remember this, but he actually pretty much said OC Manure. Yeah, help me with that one. That's yeah. a tough one. Sure. Yeah, OC. This Africa. is what the nickname for him is OC. Yes. Uh, defensive end for the Atlanta Falcons now. Right. And McCoy went took to Twitter to basically say, yeah, OC sucks too. So oh, hey. Um, you know, McCoy is which is obviously not very true either. Yeah, he obviously doesn't have a future in scouting because Yeah, uh, exactly. Which makes me think this is all jokes. No shine. Either he's he's joking or he's crazy. So no shine, how do you feel about so and so? Oh he sucks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> is that it? Yeah, he sucks. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. But I mean if anybody can say it is no shine Moreno. I personally feel like that's I mean not no shine. Mean, I'm sorry, Shady no McCoy. Sean, right. Yeah. The shady guy McCoy. Wow. Anyway, so next game, buddy. What we got next? Okay. All right. Falcons-Jets. Boy, this was a fun one. Well, not for me. Not for Falcons fans. Not for uh, fantasy football players who happen to have Julio Jones, oh, boy. which is myself. But Rough we'll times. get to that later. Rough times. Monday Night Football, the Falcons at 1-3. and three. Surprising one, Surprisingly 1-3. and three. Yeah. Taking on the Jets. Boy, that's a great ball, though. And did anyone expect the Jets to be where they are today? Absolutely not. Look at that pass from Geno. Look at Coach Rex. Look how much weight he's lost. Yeah. He's like that shirt up. still looks it looks baggy on him. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, back to Gino. He's that, throwing another touchdown. That's like, poor tackling. That is poor tackling. And definitely poor effort by Samuel there at the, at the goal line. So isn't it a, isn't it an excuse that the Falcons have a lot of injuries? Is that the reason why they are struggling this year? Well, that yeah, a, obviously that's a factor. Every year, you know, you want to stay injury free. Right. And I have another question. Where is Michael Turner? Um, man, I was going to say my nickname for him, but I don't think it's appropriate for Reggie. Okay. I don't want to insult anybody. Right. I, that's, I'm not that type of guy. Okay. But let's just say I've heard people call him Fat Burner Turner. Well, hey. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of funny. But um, <laughs> hey. I didn't say it was me, buddy. I said I heard. Hey, you call it what you want to. Allegedly, he's been called that. Like since he left the league or before he left the league or the league left Man, him? the whole time he was in the league, man. Hey, I, he I, put up numbers, though. He did. He did. He was a good running He's back. He's premier back. Look at that. First of all, we just missed a catch, a great oh. catch from Don Julio. And, that, was, um, that was nasty. That one and nasty. he has – he's hurt now. And I yeah. happen to have him on my, on my fantasy team. So, Sorry apparently, that, he's down with a, a fractured foot. Yeah. Well, they're not disclosing what it is yet. They're trying to be hush-hush about it. Well, I got some inside the information. Source, right. I know some doctors. You know, I was once in, um, going out to get my doctorate. Dr. Phil? Right. <laughs> right. Um, but anyway, yeah, um, from what I've heard, it's the same problem of the f- on the foot that he had going into the draft. Yeah. Um, where he broke his foot and still ran a 4.38 and with that a broken foot. And surgically repaired, right? Right. They put a pin in it. Um, and apparently he might have actually broke open or moved that pin around. I mean, that's not That's not. That's good. not a good sign. That's not good. So, yeah, they, they, I think he's going to be benched for the rest of the year. He's too important to that franchise. Yeah. Um, but as you see, game-winning field goal for the Jets here. Um Rex Ryan, who's he, obviously he been working even, out. He doesn't even believe that they won. That yeah, game. he's surprised still. Oh, my God. Oh, the, <laughs> that is never a good sign. He's also happy he's going to have a job, maybe. Not a good sign. All right, so, Falcons, should we just uh, hang it up and call it a season? I mean, I, I, mean, I don't. <laughs> I, I, You know, they still got a decent quarterback. They still have a decent running game behind quiz. Decent. Uh, not great. Um, they don't have to hang it up, but they can um, give it up wow. without Julio. Wow. Okay. You know, yeah. I mean, they could. They're f- feel free for the them expert. to go out there and play hard, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, world victories. Right? Yeah. If I'm the coach, okay. I'm like, hey, feel free to give it your all, but we're not going to win. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's a bad situation to be in. Wow. Too. Good thing you're not the coach. Exactly. Boy, I would have quit mid-season. Brutal. I'm gonna walk away from this. Um, but anyway, so let's move on to the next game: Niners and the Texans. And we thought this would be a good game. We thought this was a game of you know two teams with Super Bowl Super Bowl aspirations. Yeah, but we were sadly mistaken. I guess. I guess so. <laughs> um, well, we were. Were we sadly mistaken? Was Shop sadly sadly mistaken? Anybody who's a Texans fan that thought they they were gonna win this game was sadly mistaken. Right. And last year, you know, we put up we put up some um videos of Matt Shaw basically having his jersey burned. Yeah. So I wonder what did the fans do this this week. Oh man. So yeah, if you didn't see that game last week and you're wondering why they burned their jerseys, just Here watch we this. Well there it is you right know, there. First highlight uh is a pick six. And that that's not Okay. I gotta say this was good defense though. We wanna watch the replay here. But it, is they it? disguised. It looks like it's a man. It's but a it's man's really zone. a zone, right? It's a so man's zone. They disguised zone. it well. He peels off the receiver on the outside and jumps the route. But that's a basic concept, like in high school. Yeah, 
this is a professional quarterback. Yeah, like, yeah. No, I, I hear you. I hear you. I'm just trying to give some, some credit to <laughs> yes, Matt Schaub. I'm, I'm trying, trying to help him keep his job. I'm man. trying to do something. I'm trying to help him keep his job. You're a good job. guy, bro. You, you have always been a good guy. I don't I like can... seeing people fired, except for Lane Kiffin. <laughs> and then there's another one. Well, you're obviously not a Texas fan. That's why <laughs> you don't want to see him fired. But, like, where, where do Dang. the fans go from here? They burned his jersey already. Like, what's what's next? I don't know. But just like how you were feeling about Julio Jones, I'm feeling uh, this uh, Matt Schaub situation because I have Ugh. Andre Johnson. Oh, oh that's God. tough. Yeah, that's tough. So even though he's not hurt, he's he's hurting on the stat book. But what where, what do they do? I mean, what do they do? The fans. What what does what does the Texans organization do? Seriously, all jokes aside, do you start Matt Schaub again, which Kubiak has come out and said he would, which who is the coach of the Houston Texans? Yeah, you know, I think they got to figure out what's wrong with him because you know he he put up decent numbers. Yeah, but he's career. always been Schaub. He's sort of like Romo without you know the spe- okay, that's but another even Romo is not never this bad. That's bad. This right is like there. early Jay Cutler. And right yes, here. that that is a guy wearing the number sixty three, which means he's one of the big uglies. Yeah, that means he's not supposed to be catching the ball. He should never be catching the ball. <laughs> That I mean, you know, Matt Schaub was atrocious. Let's let's just keep it real right now. Yeah. He didn't yeah. give this is my problem with Matt Schaub. There's bad and then there's bad where you don't even give your team a chance to win. Right. And he didn't give them even a chance. Like from the jump, it was over. Yeah. Thirty four three. Yeah, that's it's not a Kaepernick threw fifteen total passes and wow. completed six. All he had to do was complete six passes. That's all he had to do for them to win thirty four to three. <laughs> what does that tell you? That tells you that uh, the Santa Monica Junior College could probably beat the Houston Texans right now. And what I'm what I'm seeing from Matt Schaub is that he's really his mechanics are getting really bad. He's throwing off the back foot almost every play, which tells me he's unsure of himself. <laughs> exactly. So and what's what's going on in his head? That's my question. And I think can you fix it. I think he has to go back to the drawing board and he has to get confident again. He has to wipe all that out his memory. He has to stop remembering that he sucks. He needs the Kobe system. <laughs> Is that what it is? Well, I don't know. You can't have the Kobe system without like playing like Shab. You know, Kobe was or is the mental edge. That's yeah, but that's about. the thing. Like he has to somehow forget that he's stinking it up. I don't know how he does that. You know what's really cool though? Uh, no one on the team is really throwing him under the bus. That's a good. That's a sign of a, a veteran team. You know, I saw Foster get frustrated on the field, but no one has come out in the public. Right, right. And that's probably Kobe at keeping a lid on things. Yeah, you know, yeah. but don't as you say that. Let's you know today is Tuesday, yeah, let's, let's Wednesday. We want to hear. Stay tuned. It's gonna be uh, you know it's anonymous player. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> Basically yeah. says Matt Shop stinks and we can't win with him. Right. So you know, and you know who's the pop, most popular guy right now? The backup quarterback. Boy, so moving on. That's brutal. Yeah, it is. This was a very, very, very big time game here: Colts versus Seahawks. And oh, I yeah. call this game the of game week. of the future quarterbacks because I personally feel that. Andrew Luck and, and Russell Wilson are a, a level above some of the young quarterbacks that we see in the game. They're definitely showing it, man. I can't I can't hate on that. So I was very I like to. yeah I was I was eager to see this game, especially Luck against this this amazing Seahawks defense. Yeah. So just to get it jumped off, the Seahawks um, come out with a block kick and they yeah. get a safety off of that, not a touchdown. Yeah, you know, slow down, buddy, slow down. You almost got that. Yeah. Boy. Yeah, slow motion is amazing. <laughs> um, so anyway, we're back to Andrew Luck. And this guy, man, look at this guy. Look at this pass. It's on the money to a nice T.Y. Wide Hilton. Open. He is wide open. It looked like a blown coverage. And that's Sherman. It. I think Sherman was supposed to be in zone, as you see him and Earl Thomas No, discuss. it was a blown zone coverage. Definitely blown zone coverage. Right, Sherman's peeling off. Yeah. to the flat. That looks like that should be on Earl Thomas right there. Looked like he should have been deep deep enough to, to cover that, that corner route. That horrible angle. Exactly. Boy. Yeah, and see, you know, Sherman doesn't like to give up passes. Right. He's he's definitely a big-time player. Definitely. Um, this was a duel, though. Yeah. And uh, and we thought it was going to be, but we didn't know, I guess, how real it was going to be. This is, I mean, I love seeing great special teams plays. Look at this kicker, man. Like, what does this kicker run in the 40? Well, Look actually, at this guy. Uh, like, who is this returning it that's getting caught by the kicker? Either he is very slow, and you know he heard about it, too, in, in film study. Uh, he, at least he scored, though. If he got caught and tackled, then yeah, it would have been That would have been bad. But that kicker worse. was not messing around. He didn't uh, pull a hammy or anything. He was chasing that guy. Uh, he wanted to tackle him, he too. He laid a wood. Yeah, look at him. Well, I mean, he was, he was winded. He was winded. Yeah, he looks tired, too. <laughs> Now we see why he's on special teams. Anyway, right. Russell Wilson, um, this is one. Of, I think this was the best pass. And what, is this the pass? No, this no, is not. This is him running for his team. life, yeah. which Russell Wilson has been doing every single game now because that Seattle offensive line is atrocious. Wow. Um, they that lost bad. their best player, one of the best left tackles, Russell Okung. That's right. And now ever since then, man. But this was the best pass of the that game to me. That was ball. a dime. That's what we call a dime. 
Great ball. You can't throw a better pass than that. And tell tell us tell the audience why that was such a good pass. Well, former receiver. First of all, the ball's over the top, near the outside shoulder, where it's hard for the defender to get to it. Mm-hmm. But the timing of the route is what made it work. Any right. earlier, that ball might get batted down. Any later, it's out of the out of the end zone. Right, and that's so. a play. That's a pass where the defender can't make a play. Only your guy can catch it. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So um, the Colts are really putting together something really good right here. Um, as you see, the Seahawks defense getting after it. Yeah. What they usually do. And but what I like about what the Colts are doing is they're running the ball. They're changing the whole culture over there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they are becoming a smash mouth team with a good quarterback. Yeah. And, and yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's another. That's just a ball, just like the the one we just talked about with Russell Wilson. Great spot. Mm-hmm. Throws it over the top mm-hmm. and lands where only the receiver can get it. Right. Big time uh, quarterback play in this game, yeah. and I just think the Colts are building something to beat Peyton Manning and the Denver Broncos of the league. Yeah, and I think the coolest thing from this game was seeing Andrew Luck respond to adversity. Right, you know they're down five here with ten minutes to go in the game. You got a really young quarterback. He doesn't look frazzled. Look at him stepping up in the pocket. He's got yeah. guys flying by him. He steps up, and makes great strong throws, and right. he's marching them down the field, managing he, the offense. He even the talks throws. like Manning. <laughs> Without the country the twang, yeah, it just like sounds really intelligent. He almost sounds like a geek. Well, he went to Stanford. He did go to Stanford. You know, they don't play over there. He's like an athletic geek. Yeah, that's what I want for my quarterback. Hey, right. You don't want a Jamarcus Russell. You definitely don't. wow. You never want to walk into the club and he see can Jamarcus never Russell. Never live that down. Yeah, if you're a running back or a receiver, you don't want to walk into the club, you know, the hot party and see your quarterback with a chain on and like yeah. some some. You Speaking know. of which, any Matt Leinart signing, sighting series? No, you, that's another thing. You don't want to go to the local Hollywood party and see Matt Leinart hanging out with all the babes. And right. then, hey, hey, QB, what are you doing? While I'm still second or third or fourth on the death chart. Right. right. Where's your playbook? Shout out to Matt. <laughs> Shout out to Matt Leinart. Go still Trojans. Somewhere partying as we speak. Yeah. Um, yeah, but this was a good game. And that's the seal right there, the interception yeah. from Butler. Great Russell game. Wilson, great game. Great mm-hmm. game. And that's the first loss for the Seahawks. So yeah. they had to lose at some point. Yeah. They're not the same team on the road as they are at home. That's interesting. Well, they got what do they call it? The thirteenth, the twelfth man, twelfth man. 12th man. I'll tell you this. Look, if they get home field advantage, no one in the NFC will beat them in the playoffs. No one. Well, that's what it's looking like. No one. NFC West. So, um, what we got next, buddy? We got any other games? We got so oh, wow. Well, uh, we can talk about Cincinnati. Uh, New England. There was not much to talk about in that game. That was an ugly that football was really game. Ugly. It, I mean, it depends on what you like in football. It was a defensive game. Right, definitely. The one takeaway Particularly I... Particularly Cincinnati's defense. Right. That's the one takeaway from the game is that Cincinnati's defense is real. Yep. They shut Tom Brady all the way down. Uh, what's the final score on that one? Oh, boy. Did oh. It doesn't matter. It was like three. It doesn't really. It's like three to seven. Matter. It was hell yeah. It was really low scoring. Yeah. They look like the National League playoffs. You know that was where that's <laughs> Tom Brady is probably uh, just you know staying up late, not being able to sleep. You know losing Aaron Hernandez, losing all his weapons. Man, I think he's taking sleeping pills. Wes Welker. I think he's trying to go to sleep rather than stay up and think about those you know young receivers out there. Boy, yeah, thirteen six. That was the final there. Yeah, he's probably the like premier quarterback. Yeah, he's like, man, like, where is Tony Montana? That's why I call Hernandez. Wow. Um, yeah, where What's is he? What's the latest on him? Is anybody? I haven't heard uh, from last I heard he was in jail. <laughs> <laughs> Same with the rest of the country, man. I don't oh, know if there was yeah, I don't know. Last I heard trial. he was. Uh, Isn't there a trial he's got to still go through? Yeah, last I heard something? he was three hots in a cot for him. Wow. And some big guy named Bubba. Wow. Looking at him. I mean, but Hernandez is a big life, guy himself. Life. So. Life. Okay. You know, the scary part is he might be the craziest person in his cell block. Right. Anybody messing with him? Like, I, I wouldn't be surprised to hear that Hernandez has already started his own gang in jail. <laughs> like, he just went, he just gave up football oh, and said, I'm going to just, you know, be the best I can be in jail. I hope not. Golly. I can you believe not. that? He Instead of playing on Sunday, you are sitting in jail because you want to be a psychotic murderer. Oh, boy. And I'm, I say this allegedly. Right, allegedly a psychotic <laughs> right. murderer. 323-965-1600. <laughs> <laughs> Chime in, call in, talk to us about your team and their chances to... Take it all the way. Take it all the way. All right. Shall we move on? Yeah, let's go to the, the people who don't get paid. Oh, great. Yeah, for football, to play football. <laughs> who go get their brains beat out but, you know, don't get to reap the benefits. Poor guys. You know, who knows if that is, you know, the right thing to do or not. Yeah, well. Um, and, and one of these guys, the yeah, one of these guys, he's the biggest name probably in college football. One of the biggest names. Yeah. <clears throat> Jadavion Clowney. Yes. An amazing defensive end from South Carolina. Beast. Beast. Mm-hmm. Looks like a beast. Um, was a Heisman Trophy candidate yeah coming into the season yeah 
and things haven't gone as planned for him so far this season. Right. Um, there's me. been some things going on. Um, some people have said he's been taking plays off. He's playing to not get hurt. He's going to be a top three pick regardless of what he does. Right. Um, and something in- very interesting happened over this uh, weekend. What happened, Mike? He didn't play. What do you mean he didn't play? He just didn't play. Well, he why just, didn't he play? That's the question. Um, he said his ribs were hurt. Okay. And you know what? That's a good reason, right? Well, right. That's what I thought. But, you know, let's let Spurrier tell it better than we can. Okay. Because he seems he seems to have some questions about why he didn't play. Okay. Gotcha. Um, Are his ribs broken? No. No. I, that, that, did, that was not the report coming back. Okay. They but hurt. But they're hurt. They hurt. And apparently some people said that they didn't know his ribs hurt were hurting. Hmm. So yeah, let's run that ribs. let's run that clip. Let's hear what this Steve has to when say. When did you know Jadavian wasn't gonna play and will he be available next week? I don't want to get into all of that. Uh, I will just say he told me he couldn't play. That his ribs hurt, couldn't run. And uh said I can't play. I said, Well that's fine. You don't have to play. And uh we'll move on. And he may not be able to play next week. I don't know. But uh, we're not going to worry about it. I can assure you that. If he wants to play, we'll welcome him to come play for the team if he wants to. But if he doesn't want to play, he doesn't have to play. Simple as that. Did he tell you you this? Oh, right before the game. Right before the game. We we were were thinking he was going to suit up and play. But uh, he did not practice Thursday. His ribs were bruised. And uh, he said... Couldn't run. He said he couldn't play. So, anytime a player says he's hurt, can't play, um, who are we to question it? He he doesn't play. Okay. Well, he said he couldn't play. <laughs> all, all he needed was some tobacco and a twig in his mouth. You know, there's a lot of interesting things said in that uh, post game. What is, was that? A press conference? I don't know what that yeah, was. Yeah, post com press, press conference, conference post game. A lot of interesting things there. If you really break that down. Yeah, break it down for us. Okay. First of all. The guy saying that he can't play, but the expectation was that he should be mm-hmm. playing. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so another part of the backstory is he's expected, if he can't play, to tell the doctors and tell the coaches mm-hmm. that he's not going to be ready to go right. at game time. Right. And he usually usually tell them that by, what, Thursday? Most the likely, so the coaches can be prepared and get the game plan together. And- right, but he didn't tell them until right before yeah. kickoff. That's probably where the frustration stems from sure. for Spurrier. Sure. Um, on, on a on another note, just a quick question: Like, why was Spurrier so sun sun sun, sun uh, burnt, whatever you call it? Well, he's probably trying to tan. You think so? Yeah. You don't think it has anything to do with him like not wearing shirts to practice? No, I think that has everything to him. Everything, with him. everything to do with that. He's do we, trying to tan. Do we have that picture? We just, I think we before we start really talking about this matter, I just want to. This is exactly why he's sunburned. He's trying to, you know, get that golden brown look. Right, on, you obviously. Know? Yeah. You know, I'm not trying to, you know, have our audience already make their mind up about this guy. Because just seeing this picture, can you take anything this guy has to say seriously? Boy, yeah. if he's showing up to practice like that, talk about motivating your team. That'll make anybody angry. Seriously, you really well, gonna stand there and look, make me look at you all day? All That'll day, amongst uh, great athletic specimens, yeah. you you gonna got the nerve to bring your pot belly? Saggy body out here. That's nasty. That was nasty. That's so anyway, nasty. back to the subject. Okay. Um, so Jadavion says, "Hey, I know we're about to kick off. We're about to, I'm supposed to suit up, but I'm not really feeling it." Right. Right. It didn't seem like Spurrier believed him. No, it definitely didn't seem like he believed him. But he said, "If my guy says I can't play, who are we to say? Get your butt out there and play." Now this is my my problem or my issue or what I believe. Let me just say this is my belief. Mm-hmm. This has been brewing for some time now. So Spurrier has been feeling like Jadavion has not been giving 100% from probably day one. Mm -hmm. Because you don't come out and make a statement like that in a press conference about your best player. Right. That's such a strong statement if this hasn't been building up. Right. You know, if this is one occasion, you're like, okay, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. He's my best player. Right. Something happened or had been happening throughout the season that made Spurrier just say, you know what, I'm just done. I'm just going to speak my mind. I don't know what's going on with the guy. I thought he could play. He said he didn't want to play. If he ever wants to play, he can come back and play, and well, know, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, and so I do agree with you that it is brewing. Let me take it to a different direction, though. As a coach, you never want to lose control of your team or yeah. the perception 
you never want to lose the perception that you have control of your team. Right. And in this press conference, he's saying if he wants to play, mm -hmm. he can play. If he doesn't want to play, mm -hmm. then really, who's the coach? Right. I also think you don't want to throw your players under the bus in the in the press. Just like the, the, the coaches hold the players to a certain standard to not say certain things into the, sure. to the media, sure. the coaches should also be held to those standards. Okay, so Everything he felt so could have been held in-house. In, in Touche. But what did just, you just saying everything? He shouldn't have said not, none of the stuff he just said right now? I, I think he should have said Jadavion could not play due to injury, and that's all the information I have right now. Right. I think he should have pulled a bill of check and gave him the you know eight word answer and look at him with a you know with a still face with a blank stare. Well, maybe he doesn't feel like he has control and he needs the media to help him motivate his players. I just think he was frustrated with the guy and he wanted to you know he said hey look if you're gonna do this to me in my career I'm gonna you know throw it out there because you know what what happens now. This won't affect Jadavion's draft position. So to say, maybe maybe one or two slots. Maybe a little but, bit. Yeah, maybe a little bit. What it will do, though, I'll tell you this. It will make every GM and franchise dig a little bit deeper. Right, exactly. They're going to do a little bit more homework because exactly. it's a red flag. Definitely. They're going to say, okay, does this guy have a good motor? Does he want to practice hard? Does he want to play? Does he love the game? Or maybe he's just fed up because, you know, they the ticket sale, the ticket prices went up $6 this year because they knew they had him on the team, and yeah. he ain't seeing none of that money. That could be it. I mean, he, he's already – he took out an insurance policy on himself. Right. I think a million dollars. Okay. Um, so he's already started to think about that. Right. You know, so obviously this is – he started to think about the next level. It's not just, hey, go out and play so football. So can you be mad at him for sitting out of his ribs no, uh, hurt? First of all, I can't be mad at him for any decision he makes about his own well-being. And I'm not, I'm not here to say he was hurt or not hurt. I don't know the guy. I don't know what was going on. What I can say, on the field his performance has not been what I thought it would be. And I've said that from week one. Well, you know, we we yeah, we've always talked about he had one amazing play where yeah. he was. I mean, it was kind of the right place at the right time. Yeah, the ball bounced right into his hand. And I've know. taken a lot of heat for saying that I think the guy's overrated. Right. And and now, but the thing is, you got to keep everything in context. Now, when I say he's overrated, does that mean he's not good? No, of course not. Good. I think he's a great yeah, player. Right. He will be great. But the greatest defensive player Come we've on. seen in the last 10 years. you got to be kidding me right now. Yeah. No. I mean, these are just some of the things we've heard from this guy. Definitely. The greatest draft, draft defensive draft I, prospects SEC. ever. Right. Yeah. He's the, one of the most dominating pass. He's the Le I've heard him him called the LeBron James of pass rushing. I've never heard that one. Who are you talking to? I uh, it was some guy I was reading on ESPN, some Boy. scout guy. Whew, and you know these guys, these scouts, they it just seems like they just pick a player and they just go overboard with it. Yeah, wow. the LeBron James of pass rushing. Did he did he have the? I mean, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> I, I just I I have never seen that from this guy. Yeah, he I looks need, like LeBron James. I need a bigger body of work. Before we I need start more than that. that. Yeah, I need more from him. We don't believe you. You need more people. <laughs> um, so I mean, we're not going to say he's not good and terrible. He's definitely good. But, but yeah, right. He's not good and terrible. Right, but you know. Anyway, Anyways, enough about today. I think uh, we have a caller. Yeah, what we got caller. Welcome to the locker room. How you guys doing? We're doing pretty good. How are you? I'm enjoying your show. What's your name? Where are you from? I'm from Oakland, California. Oak Town, our home city. But my question, did the coach ever ask the kid what was his problem outside of his uh, hurting ribs? Did the coach ever say, go and see the doctor and get checked out? I don't know. That's, that's a good question. That's a great question because the coach for it didn't I say mean, but I know if they I'm have their the own doctors. The team, when I'm thinking about my player's welfare, and he says he can't play because his ribs are hurting. Well, no, the doctors the doctors cleared him to play. He's yeah. medically cleared. They said he's good enough. Right, and no one knew he was that hurt. Because they have their own doctors on the team. They have their own, you know, doctors in the facility. They have doctors they can send him to. So, yeah, I think the information would have got to the coach if he was really hurt. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, if he's complaining of some discomfort, I mean, I'm just not saying the doctors are all perfect, but he said he can't play. Well, that's, that's, that's that. something that concerns me. So if you're the coach, what do you do? The doctors say he's good. The kid said he's not good. Do you go with the kid or do you go with the doctor? In this today's well, day I, and age, in today's I, day and I'd age. I'd probably go with the kid, but I question my doctors. Have we done a pretty extensive physical to see 
what's wrong with his ribs or they poke him or whatever they, they do to find out if there is such a well, I think one of the issues. I think one of the issues was they didn't have enough time because it was just it. They got that information probably right before the game that he right. couldn't play, and I think that's what had Spurrier so shocked. It was like, oh, I didn't know he couldn't play. Where is this coming from? Well, so, if it's just before the game like that, then I would say yes. Yeah, I, I I wouldn't play him, but before the next game come, comes along, I, he would do a, a pretty good physical for me. I would determine if he can play or not. Right, and Spurrier has actually come out and he said that um, that Clowney has been going to rehab twice a week and they're working on him. He's actually questionable for this next week. Okay. And that he's getting worked on and they're trying to get him ready to play. But I also heard that there were times early in this injury where Spurrier would walk in the, in the training room and they would see him kind of clowning around, cracking jokes, and, mm. you know, you know what you do in the locker room. Yeah. You're not really working out and you're supposed to be working out. Right. Right? That's what's in question. That's where this angst is coming from. Where... Has he been, and what has he been doing? Exactly. Have you really been rehabbing? Are you really trying to get back on the field? That's my point. I don't see a coach like Spurrier. Let's remember, he's very seasoned. And I know he's probably an old-school SEC coach Absolutely. who's like, play with your arm broken, put some tape on it. We've rub had coaches some, like that. Rub some dirt on it. Rub some dirt on it. Tape it up. You know, <laughs> coach, my bone is coming out of my skin right now. Tape it up. Let's <laughs> throw some dirt on it. You know, you can play. Right. He seems like he could be one of those coaches, but – he also knows how to deal with the media. So yes. I don't I don't see him as a guy who will lose his cool and just say anything because he's upset. I think that was calculated, mm. and I think he was frustrated, and he wanted the world to know that, hey, look, this guy wow. is not quite what he seems to be right. in a subtle way. Wow. Which tells me that uh, it's not all peaches and cream over there in no, uh, it's not. South Carolina when yeah. you're throwing your, like you said, you're throwing your kid under the bus. Yeah, what's going on? All these, these coaches and these players, these coaches are really starting to throw. I mean, you know, that, that goes to show you. Oh, uh, Carla, you still there? I'm still there. Oh, yeah. Well, thank, <laughs> we want to thank you for that. And, you know, thanks for sparking that conversation. We really appreciate it. Um, any more comments? Uh, no, I'm just curious about about it. It's kind of suspicious to me. Yeah, I, 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 I just don't see how he could get in the press conference and cut it short. Maybe he did that intentionally. Yeah, you know, not really wanting to talk about it because he's unclear as to what what the kid's attitude is as far as playing for him. I don't, I don't know. I just as a coach, I think I have a responsibility to say, okay, let's go see the doc. Let him give a full spirit. You know, physical. Maybe he hurt his ribs in practice or something like that. He, he kept it quiet, but you know, I, 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 I just feel like to uh, kind of get to the bottom of it. Kind of well, we'll only time will tell. You know, we'll see over the next couple of weeks how this story plays out. So, caller, thank you. Thanks for the call, man. Oakland, California. Uh, I'll see you next week. Yeah, yeah cool. See, that's a loyal. That's a loyal caller. So I'll see you next week. Next weekend. <laughs> Why do I keep saying this weekend? I don't know. It's like the weekend for me. Is it That's like, how the show feels. Tommy, you ain't got no job. You ain't got no job. Tommy still doesn't have a job, even <laughs> though the government shut down. He's the only one going to work, though. <laughs> um, reference. So, yeah, man. I, I, you know, yeah, back to it. Like, there's a lot of coaches throwing players under the bus right now, and I just think that, you know, their job's on the line, and they're just not having it. Yeah. We saw the same thing with Greg Schiano and uh, Freeman. That yeah. just got so ugly. Ugh. That got really nasty. Coaches, uh, coaches got to figure out ways to motivate their guys. Yeah, a little bit more of uh, college football news before we go on and move on to our break. Yeah. Um, Condoleezza Rice it is, I think, a candidate to be on the the, the playoff selection for college of, football. Of, of, of wait, the playoff selection of Congress? The, no, the playoff selection it's of the college Senate? football. You know, they're moving to a playoff the House system. House of Representatives. What does she have to do with football? <laughs> that's, the playoff selection that's for that's what my question is. The like GOP, she is in the running to be on the playoff selection committee for college football. Not the GOP. Not the Democratic Party. Um, football. I'm sorry. Now, in her defense, there's well, at least I saw this on a commercial, so I haven't checked, checked my references. They said she watches a lot of football. I watch a lot of football, too. Ain't nobody calling me, asking me to be on that committee. I think that the commercial said she was in Israel one time, and the football game was on, and she was watching the football game, and everybody understood because she watched wow. football. You know, that's like um, <laughs> Sarah Palin saying, I have great foreign policy because I live close to Russia because I live in Alaska. Because we can still – I can see Russia from here. I can see Russia from here, right? Boy. Okay, um, so who's – who? yeah. So, yeah, so, so give me your take on Condoleezza choosing playoff teams. I, I don't have a take. I'm trying to figure out who's responsible for that. <laughs> 
I, that doesn't make any sense to me. Now, I don't know. I don't know if she's made the committee yet. I just know that you know, they had some real football. That uh, Hayden, Hayden, the the, the athletic director, Pat uh, Hayden. Pat Hayden. Yeah. Okay. They had uh, Tom Osborne, Ooh, former player. Yeah, Tom yeah. Osborne, uh, all time great college coach. Makes sense. Um, then there's Condoleezza Rice. Wow, maybe because she threw missiles at Iraq or something. I don't. I don't know. Right. Long bomb. Bomb. Maybe she was like the kicker on her high school team. <laughs> And she got uh, dressed I, in a separate, you know, locker room and everything. Or I just got a tweet. Someone says she she just loves football, so they they gave her the job because she loves football. You know what? That's okay. That's great. This is what you know. What I love football too. <laughs> I'm going make. Her, I'm going up to Pat Hayden. You think the USC job is? I can get a chance at an interview. Hey, probably actually. I'm just. I love football. But look, then that's my pitch. If the USC Trojans go undefeated. And they don't make the the postseason because of this committee because Condoleezza Rice chooses to throw in uh, uh, South Dakota State. <laughs> we are gonna have some major problems. I'm gonna say this. Look, I love my country, so I, I'm gonna make a running for the president. Oh, that's C. <laughs> so I'm going for it because you love the country. Because I love my country. All right. Okay. All right. Makes perfect so, sense. Moving on to something that makes more sense. Oh boy. Uh, basketball. Um, we got just some quick. Quick, quick uh, news about basketball. One, Kobe is getting that uh, knee procedure again. Yeah, it's like some magic stuff. Yeah. I what, wonder why they don't let you do it in the United States. I, I wonder what See, I was about. hoping you would say it, so I didn't have to say it. I mean, there's so a reason we why get he any, keeps going to Germany. I want to let you know, if we get any feedback, some bad publicity from this, I'm blaming do it we have all a picture? on you. We, have, we do have a picture of it. Because Kobe has the power to crush our whole little you know, so what are they movement. sticking in his knee here? Um, that looks like acupuncture, but what what they say he's getting is the uh, plasma spinning thing. That I guess they spin the blood and they give it more oxygen, which allows him to heal fast. I'm trying to act like I know what I'm talking yeah, about. I have no idea. But what it just about. does something to make his knee feel better. And he said it worked last year, which it looked like it because Kobe probably had one of. The, I mean, for me, he had one of his better seasons I've ever seen him have last year. Yeah, he had a good season. Okay, so they're giving him this treat- treatment in his knee. Yeah. What about his Achilles? I think he's probably still working on that. Uh, I would hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's still working on that one. Um, this is, I guess, you know, like he said, the knee thing worked and he's going back to it. But okay. um, JR, my, my co host, hey. said, hey. JR, not Smitty Klutz said, hey. why is he going to Germany? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> hey. Is it, maybe that's what the doctors are, John. They have good doctors in Germany. Hey, man, I, I hear Kaiser Permanente ads on the radio every single day. Is anybody else allowed to go to Germany to go get medical treatment? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Right. Well, let's just say uh, whatever he's doing is working. <laughs> I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> Wow, I just had another tweet come in. They, 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 the, man, wow, the Twitter world is upset at us for clowning Condoleezza Rice. They said, we don't know her knowledge of football. How come oh, we talk See, I knew her? it. That's why I said stop doing that, John. Because that is, per, first of all, I think it's sexist of you. Uh, you know what? To even now imply that. throw me under the bus. <laughs> Coach, uh, what's his name, Spurrier? Thank I'm you. just saying. I, I told you before the show, hey, I don't you. agree with this topic. I don't agree with this segment. Yeah, okay. I think Condoleezza has all the credentials to be on the committee. <laughs> And I don't appreciate you implying that she doesn't. You are really selling this just real because hard she has never guy. played football. Smitty clutch for president. <laughs> I'm just saying. Anyways, let's keep it moving. You know, I'm trying to keep the feminist movement off of us, whatever, that, <laughs> whatever. That, you know, that's, that's exactly where it's going to go. If he was, if he was a guy, you wouldn't say that. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would. I'd be like, what? If I, Skip Bayless was trying to be on the committee, I would what say, what the hell is Skip Bayless exactly. doing? Trying to exactly because <laughs> you love sports, sports every day, right? Right. Okay. Anyway, moving on. Uh, now we got the. This is going back to last show. Uh, we had a long discussion <laughs> about why the old and cranky Michael Jordan was just so cranky and just felt the need to tell the whole world that he was better than OJ Mayo and right. he schooled him in high school. Right. As if we couldn't guess that. <laughs> um, so now we have As some visual. It really matters. Right. So Michael Jordan um, made sure to call us and say, hey, look, I want you to show the world. So they don't <laughs> think we were lying. Now, he didn't really call. Obviously, he didn't call us. But we just thought we wanted to show you guys that he wasn't telling a lie no. not that you guys thought he was because he's michael jordan and you know he's oj mayo in so high he, school but here's the here's the visual here's the video this okay. is michael doing his patent back down, down up. you gotta get away. the fade yeah 
Wow, we didn't, we've been seeing that since 97. Yeah, I'm sure we could have guessed that he would do it against Majo, too. Right. Yeah. Here we'll it is again. do it again. Here it is again. Right, back down. This yeah. is an, an old school mic. Oh, well, we're going to take it to the, to the paint a little yeah, bit. Yeah, a little bit too strong for Mayo, who, again, is in high school. <sighs> did, did Michael Jordan, did he leak this? He probably leaked himself. <laughs> Michael Jordan's still leaking he videos. He's holding on to this video for, you know, years. The old, uh, talented, greatest ever Michael Jordan, again, comes down and goes right by Mayo, the high schooler, again, right. and scores. Yeah. More Jordan. Michael Jordan hitting the, you know, the oh, reverse. the reverse. I still got it. That's what he said. I still got it. He's not, he not jumping too high. No. <laughs> it's not come fly with me anymore. That's not your airness. It's right. more like a... Uh, it's come post up with me. Yeah. <laughs> Uncle MJ. <laughs> oh, cross. Oh, behind the back. Oh, yeah, he, spin move. Now he's going to go right to the post. Boy. He's posting up from the three-point line. That's what, yeah, that's, that's what old, that's what old, old people do. Game. That's old man game. Watch it. Look oh. here, young buck. Right now he's talking to him. Look here. You don't know what this coming, huh? That's that old huh, man huh. at the YMCA. Huh, game. Take that young buck. Mm-hmm, oh, that's the third mm-hmm. fadeaway that we've seen. Mm-hmm. All right. Look at the swag. Look, look at the swag. Him. With the earring. Right. You can't guard me, young buck. Right. Give me a high five. Thank you. Thank you. I'm still Michael Jordan. Yes. Long shorts. Mike is a trendsetter. Boy. Anyway, we just had to show you that because <sighs> Mike, it, Mike felt it's so important to tell the world that he was better than OJ Mayo. Poor OJ. Sorry, guy. Now, this is a guy with a, a team. Who, OJ? No, Michael Jordan. He's oh, an right. owner yeah, of a team. So it's course. not like he don't have anything to do. Yeah, he's got plenty of stuff to do. <laughs> Trust me. They got work to do over there. We need to find out if Mike leaked this video. <laughs> no, we need to. Let's do it. Yeah, because he's going right, to take some lumps from us. <laughs> if we find out next week, Mike, you, leave, you leaked this video... Yeah, we, we let you get have Mike it. In the locker room. We gotta work on that. We remember we said we were gonna get Mike in the locker. Yeah, room. we gotta try to get. He's not coming if he's seen this show. You're right. <laughs> well, I'll just keep this one on the under for the, the time being. Okay. Sh- <laughs> cool. Let's go to break. Can we do a break? Ryan, is that cool? Can we do a break? I only got a few more minutes anyway. But uh, once again, it's been a great show. Three two three nine six five sixteen hundred. Call in, join the conversation. But we're gonna take a quick break, and when we come back, we're gonna talk a little baseball and, and our favorite. Where they do that at? Don't leave the show. Don't leave us. We got baseball coming. We'll be right back, real quick. Game four of the NLD has between the Cardinals and Pirates. St. Louis seven, trying to avoid seven, the winner. Seven, seven, two, two fifteen. Hey yo, don't need a new style. Being dope is always in fashion. Beast to the West Coast, montage, fashion. Everything's in house, don't need a mansion. Doper than the last one. 430. And like me, I'll mix. I spit that five. Yeah. And one. Everybody swing and holler at me if you land one. Don't need perfection, just pass on. And don't need to be signed. I ain't got a cast on. A lot of opportunity. Easy bread I passed on. It just felt troubling. Now class is in session and we got them testers bubbling like Scantron. Fresh out the kitchen. Sign with a stamp on. I'm on some greatness. Y'all on some lateness with no foundation. So it could never last long. I display patience. I done played Jason. It's Saturday the 14th. You got a mask on. Come on. Pushing me to the brink. A stagger in my footsteps and I don't even drink. It's so much on my mind, dog, and I can't even think. It seems like everything is Pushing me to the brink, I stagger in my footsteps and I don't even drink. It's so much on my mind, dog, and I can't even think. It seems like everything is falling down. They say the 336 is what raised them, but the 919 made them. Stark raving, rhyme like he ain't got the good sense God gave him. Anybody on his bad side, God save him. Late nights by the bedside, God praise him. He's the captain that told me to kneel. And when I was surrounded by the monk at Locker Room Live. We're back. Thanks for rolling with us. Yes, yes. Locker Room Live again. You can catch us LockerRoomLiveTV.com at Smitty Clutch on Twitter. I am John Reed on Twitter. Please call in 323 965 1600. There you go. All right, it's baseball season. 400. Like, for real. It's like real baseball season now. Like for real. Not like, like the 162 boring games before yeah, the playoffs. This is the baseball season I watch. Right. And it's been uh, it's been fun. Yeah, it's uh, been a real good game. So here in the final stretch, we're going to go to baseball mm-hmm. and uh actually uh first up, we let's talk about uh let's talk about Oakland. Did you get a chance to watch, watch this series at all? I have, of course. Um Especially the last game, man. Um, I mean, this game two. Sorry, not the last game. Right. That was an amazing. I've never seen a zero zero game be so exciting. 
I'm telling you, every single pitch in playoff baseball it is matters. exciting. It matters. It matters. That's why you don't watch it until the playoffs. You know what impressed me? The young kid, Gray. Okay. To get out there and challenge the great Verlander, who was, right. in my opinion, the best pitcher in baseball, but he's wow. definitely up there. I've always felt that way. He's top five. For I've sure. always felt that way about Verlander for just sure. because he's consistent. Yeah. And challenge this guy and go inning for inning, zero to zero. Yeah. And, you know, almost win the game. Yeah. Almost win the game. That's pretty amazing. No, the A's did win. Oh, did you talk about oh, game, game two? two. Yeah, game, game two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, to keep them yeah. in the game so they win in the last inning. You know, A's are known for doing that. They've had nine rookies yeah. uh, starting to play for them over the last few years. It's That's a good a baseball team. Man. Yeah, they know their stuff. Moneyball is not a game. It's not a game. It's real. That's why they made a movie about it, people. Right, right. All right, today was an epic game. We don't have highlights because it was just fresh off the press, but okay. – um, Great game. The, both teams going back and forth. The final was 8-6. Mm. Um, but uh, the A's had plenty of opportunities to win the game. Yeah. 3 nothing. Tough loss. Went back up 4-3. Uh, but a couple of key mistakes late in the game mm-hmm. uh, by a couple of the relievers. And, uh, and they drop it. So we got game five. The deciding game five on Thursday, 5 o'clock. And who you, who you got? Who are you picking? You know, it's going to be a – I don't know, man. Both teams are very evenly matched. They both are gritty. I mean, just watching the Tigers today, mm-hmm. watching those guys fight, Miguel Cabrera playing through injury, um, watching these pitchers just duel it out. I mean, it's been one of the best series that I've seen in a long time. I need to know who's pitching, and I'll make my decision you on what I think what? wins. You know what? That's a great question. Uh, Justin Verlander, Verlander is starting for the for the, uh, for the the Tigers. Oh, boy. Yeah. So right. Don't make me get my prediction in. I'm not going to do it. But I'm not the sure. Eight, the A's are my team. Play. Yeah, we got to go. We got to roll with the hometown. I – Got a, Coco Crisp, by the way, is balling out of control. Coco, man, and we, you know, we're gonna we're gonna get him on the show pretty soon. Coming soon, um, he's definitely a fan of the show. Um, coming soon, of course, he's in the playoffs right now. But Coco coming soon, so you guys keep tuning in. We're gonna get him on here to talk about this playoff experience, and man. he is probably my favorite player he's in probably baseball. Probably the hottest batting player in the American League right now. In the well, Bucks. he's hot because it's the playoff time. Right. This guy is clutch. Is he like he has to be one of the most clutch players I've seen in a long time. Well, recently, let's recently, put it that way. Recently. Yes. He did it last year playoffs. Right. And he's doing it again this year this year playoff. Right. That's I mean, he just shows up when it matters. Yeah, that's why he's a leadoff hitter. Yeah. So, you know? yeah. Yeah, we love Coco. 22 homers too as a leadoff. Almost brought them back today as a matter of fact. Nice, so, nice. Anyways, all right. Red moving Sox. on. All right. So we got Oh, this game just went final. Red Sox right. closed them out. We got a final score on that one. Um, no final score. I just know the Red Sox won. The Red Sox. You know, we don't have to <laughs> get into We don't have to get into a baseball. 3-1 Red Sox. Can't you tell how much I love the game? Red Sox beat the Tampa Bay Devil Rays 3-1. And uh, they have a great team as well. I mean, great pitching. Yeah, Boston is tough, man. They got some great beards too. Yeah, they do. You know? That they do they do the scruff thing. I like do. that. I, I don't know what it means. I just like it. It yeah. makes them look like gritty. Definitely. Their pitching is amazing. Pitching's amazing. And they've been doing this all year long. They're not like a, you know, just fly by night, just kind of came out of nowhere. They've been dominating the AL East. And you know, we we Yankees here happened? on our show. We like we give love to everyone that is in the business of what we do. Yep. And one of the guys I listen to is Colin Hurd on ESPN. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't agree with a lot that he says. Um, but when it comes to baseball, I do agree with one point he always makes. Why are these teams giving these batters, these big bats, all this money? C- Cano was asking for three hundred million dollars. Is he serious? In ten years, which is ridiculous. Pujols got like a hundred trillion million dollars for like thirty years. He's been absolutely terrible since. You know, like Angels. Every big contract never ends up well. No. Nah. When in baseball, I'm look. I'm not a baseball expert. I watch enough. You are the baseball expert, and I know you agree with this. Yeah. It comes down to pitching. Absolutely. You can have all the great bats you want to. If I have, you know, Pedro <laughs> in his prime and Verlander and right, Mariano you guess what? Ramira, Kurt right? Schilling. Yeah. Guess what? I win. You lose. Yeah, I win. You lose. Right. Right. Just so, like a goalie in hockey. Exactly. You got a great goalie. Yeah, great defense. Good defense in football. Thing. Same thing. So why are right? they paying all? I mean, why pitchers? That's chicks it. Chicks dig the long ball. That's it. Yeah, I, and that that's it. These They're owners to sell tickets. These owners trying to sell tickets. That's the answer right there. Trying Thank you. Tickets. I asked a question. You answer. I'm just telling you. There it is. It's, it's not about winning. Era. We're still in that era. All right. So they will face uh, the winner of Oakland, Detroit, on Thursday. So they get to sit back and wait, which is good for them. Nice. So, all right. Uh, okay. Cards. Pirates. Interesting. Man. Are interesting. you telling me the Pirates are in the playoffs? Pirates are is actually a, looking good. That's not a typo? This is not Bobby Bonilla and Barry Bonds. You right? sure? All right. So we're going to actually go into the game. We're going to look at some highlights from uh, – Look, they, they look surprised game. to even be there. Like, my God. They All woke right. up in the morning like, I'm going to a playoff game. World, if you do <laughs> if you do not know who Michael Waka is – Waka. What a name. And he was 
Waka. Yeah, that's what them pitches <laughs> sound like pitches. when they're hitting, hitting that glove. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> this guy was pitching a no-no, and that Man. means a no-hitter. He almost had a perfect game. In the playoffs? Through eight. In the playoffs. He needs $300 million. Right. That's the guy that needs $300 million, right? Man, sit down. But both of these teams are playing very well. I mean, that's why they're in the playoffs. I right? like the Pirates because I like the jerseys. They do have some sweet jerseys. They, they haven't good, changed them in a long time either. They got a good fitted hat, too. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so irrelevant, right? Very irrelevant. Very irrelevant. This is so an interesting play. Guys almost run into each other. You kind of learn that in, uh, you know, instructional league. Right. You got to talk, right? Call, call, call the ball, right? Hey, I, I'm calling it. Get out of the way. Here's a here's a big name, old big name, Matt Holiday. Yeah, he's actually producing. Back on the scene, right. hitting homers. Andrew McCutcheon. Oh, that guy's an athlete. Look how he climbed that wall. I know. Jesus, that's a big wall, McCutcheon, right? man. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> big wall. All right. But that was a big, big home run. Put him up 2 nothing, And yeah. once again, the pitching was outstanding. So anybody, waka. basically, it was just coming down who, to whoever scored. That wasn't a waka. He now, that out. was his first mistake. He had a perfect game before that walk. Mm. Perfect game. Now, yeah. he still has a chance at a no-hitter. Right. Right? But right. that just shows you how great this guy was pitching. And then next batter. Oh, no, that next was batter, a nasty curveball. Jesus. Breaking ball. Good stuff. Right? Ugh. Oh, breaking ball, curveball. Same thing. One of the things that Same moves. thing. And we're going to keep the, the no-no going. Got him out. All right, and that's through seven. Seven mm-hmm. straight innings. And this is interesting. You would think that the guys would be uh, there cheering him on, patting him on the back, saying, mm-hmm. hey, great game. They absolutely left him alone and left him in solitude on the bench. And that's what you do, right? When the, when the pitcher's heaven, you let him stand his own. You don't remind him, hey, man, you got a no-hitter. In the right. Seventh inning. <laughs> You're almost there, buddy. You're so good right now. Right. And then that happened. Ugly. One mistake. So it was only a solo shot, though. That's all it takes in baseball. Right. One pitch in the wrong location, and it's out of there. He is sick to his stomach Yeah, right he now. is. He is. He thought he was destined for greatness. <laughs> I mean, to throw a no-hitter in, yeah, he, you know, yeah. in the playoffs would have been unheard of. Unheard of, right? right. So instead of that happening, we, we're just saying, oh, man, he almost or two do or, yeah. Right. It's tough. That close. Right. He walks another guy. That's okay. You know, okay. Yeah, he did his job. But well, we get the start rest of the day. Now he gets some love from the bench. Yeah. Right? All right, man. Good cool. job, Waka. Yeah. Waka anyway. Flocka. I'm going to call him Waka Flocka. Waka Flocka. He's got a new nickname. Waka Flocka Flame. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Got him. That guy was meat. You also don't want to get caught stealing bases in the playoffs either. Yeah, that that's wasted runs out. right there. Everything counts. You got to protect the base. That's brother. why I love baseball in the playoffs, man. Got to go hit and run at least. Protect your runner. Everything matters. Every, every, pitch, every pitch. Like, every I'm, I'm in it in the, in the regular season. Yeah. I mean, in the playoffs. Regular season, I my ADD kicks in. Yeah, it's pretty boring. Yeah, it's pretty. What boring a play stuff. right there! What a throw! Yeah, barehanded third base. You know that's that's kind of the norm. You know these guys are these guys are awesome. But anyways, to wrap it up, <clears throat> what ends up happening? Um, Andrew McCutcheon, he uh, he's gonna fly out here, and uh, that's the game. That's the ball game, and so we got a two-two tie going into game five here uh, tomorrow, five o'clock. Right. Now um, we don't we. We're gonna skip the the highlights for the Dodgers, but they did oh, wow, close out, out. Yeah, they closed out the Braves. Correct? Okay, cool. Yes, but something very interesting from that game, um, if we can go there, was um, Chipper Jones. Ex, oh, right, ex Braves player. Right. Um, he came out on a, on their local radio station and he picked the yes. Dodgers to win in four. Yes. Now, for me, I'm not a you know Braves fan. I sound like a smart pick to me, but the problem is he played for the Braves right. just last year. Right. So some players took offense to that. Mm-hmm. Um, I, would, I would take offense to that too. This is my guy. Yeah. This is my team. This is my you know. Uh, so you didn't agree with that. You thought Absolutely. so. You feel like he should have lied or just not answer the question. Just don't answer the question. Just, don't, I, just yeah, don't answer I can, the question. I can understand that. Yeah. Just say you know, hey, look, I can't do that. I, those are my guys. I'm just going to stay neutral on this one. Right. And I think by saying that, we kind of get what he's saying. <laughs> exactly. Um, but he didn't do that. He picked the Dodgers. He wanted to be right. So they invited him to throw out the first pitch. Yep. And. This is what ensued. Do we have um, it? Do we have, yeah, we have the interview with him. I'm actually talking about it. Um, but what happened was none of the players agreed to catch yeah. the pitch. Mm-hmm. Um, so he ended up having to throw to the to the mascot. To the mascot. Oh, we don't have it. Yeah. So, down. But it was funny. Yeah, that um, was funny. So that didn't work out the way he thought it would. No, no, not at all. No one throws the first pitch out to the mascot. Yeah. That's Can you imagine cool. that guy, the coach, you know, hey, say, uh, who's going to catch the ball? Everybody looking around. Like, uh-huh. Right. Not a good look. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not a good look for him. Not a good anyway, look. Anyway, so um, back to some baseball. Yeah, let's do uh, let's do that one. Uh, yeah. A's, Oakland. We're You know, we love Oakland. It's great. Yeah. 
Oh, we don't have that one either. Um, YouTube is just man. They're not showing big us haters no right here. now. But a uh, couple of fans got tased <laughs> again. In, yeah, this week at the uh, at the A's games. And uh, this is the second time a fan has been tased at the A's game. Yeah. Where did yeah. they do that at? Where they do that at? I'm not too sure. Right. I'm not too sure. Uh, but uh, <laughs> hard times in the uh, in the stands at the Oakland A's games. But I, mean, I guess that that's that's not really a, really a question. Is where they do that, me, bro? At. We know exactly where they do that at in Oakland, California. <laughs> they taste fans. So. You know, and, and we got one more one more where they do that at highlight here, uh, where they do interesting things. In Be Oakland. cool while cheering in Oakland. Well, and also be cool if you're playing against Oakland. Okay. What happened? I'm going to introduce the world to Grant Balfour. Do you know who Grant Balfour no, is? No, but his name just it sounds Canadian. All right. No, he's Australian, actually. Oh, okay. That's a different thing. Austra- and, uh, Aussies are tough. And I don't know about Canadians. Most people don't know who he is because they don't follow A's baseball. The right. guys in the league, they, they kind of understand. But maybe even the guys in Detroit don't understand okay. this guy either. Uh, so what happened, what ensued uh, in yesterday's, uh, I'm sorry, the last game. Uh, this is game three here. Balfour comes in, pitch, and uh, he's known as a hothead. He's got a short fuse. And as you can see, Victor Martinez fouls off, and then they exchange. They had this verbal exchange where they almost go to blows. Yeah, that's not for kids. No, not for kids. Don't look at what they're they're saying. Don't look at their mouth. But basically, Balfour is nuts. (laughs) Balfour has been known to, when he's coming out of the bullpen, he throws a cup of water over his head. He's swearing at himself. Not swearing at anyone in particular. Swearing Mm. at himself. Just getting himself psyched up. So Victor thought he was talking to him. Well, Victor is trying to get a mental edge, and he's kind of staring him down after the pitch. That's what happened right there. He stared uh-huh. him down after the pitch. And you're already talking to an, Austra- an angry Australian. Right. So as soon as Balfour saw that, he was staring him down. God, Cabrera's a good big guy. Yeah, he's large. He's large. He said, hey, you, you talking to me? <laughs> you, are you talking? You looking yeah, at me? That's how they always talk with their hands. You looking at me? And, uh, and that was that. That was it. All right, so where they do that at? Where they do that at? Everything happened in Oakland, California. So, yeah, yeah catch your A's game if you can. It's highly entertaining. Very entertaining. Um, that's our show for today. Thanks for uh, rolling with us. Please check back in Tuesday. We're going to have another good one for you. Um, you know, join the locker room, man. We love you. Keep rolling with us. All right, we're here and we're out. Tuesday. 9 o'clock.